Hello guys! On today's vlog I will answer your questions in categories to save time and then show you some of my old experimental projects. This is my cat. Many of you guys asked me about the Rival Rebels weapons and how the gameplay will be. I am planning to have a mix of space exploration and combat, as well as a player versus player and cooperation mode. I will keep most of the style and logic from the mod, and I am upgrading most weapons to energy weapons, because flamethrowers in space just don't make sense. About the price, you probably understand that I can't make it free for everyone, because I need to make money, get rich, buy diamonds, and join the Illuminati. Seriously though, the truth is, I am very thankful for everyone who is helping me out by promoting the game, they will get free access. But I want to work full time on this, so I need to make a living and pay for the servers. Also, having a team would be very nice. So how will the game work? Well, like most MMOs, you will need to download a client to your computer or device, and then connect to the central server. About Luke's question, Rival Rebels ranks will not affect abilities, but it will give you access to special content, and to the unit's leadership. Thank you for all the comments and subscriptions. Okay, this is an older project. Uh, I'm running it straight from Eclipse. This is before I even started to use Unity, so here it goes. So this is the very first Marching Cubes project I've ever made. This is before I even knew that this technique was called Marching Cubes. I actually came up with this independently, and later I found out what the name of this algorithm was. So here you can see a lot of text flying over the terrain. This text pretty much shows the case number of each voxel, I guess. You can see that there are some places where there are missing triangles because it's unfinished. So these case numbers, I wrote them down in this file over here, using this cube as reference. See, I pretty much was going to go through every single case, writing the correct points on the cube to use to generate a triangle cover for that specific cube. Uh, this uses a binary volume to check if a certain point is inside or outside a volume of terrain. So let me show you again. This binary volume is generated using simplex noise. If it's uh, less than a certain altitude, then it's considered inside the terrain. If it's greater, then it's outside of the terrain. And these triangles are marking the transition between outside and inside, which is also known as a surface. This is not an infinite terrain, even though it might seem so. The terrain actually loops every, I think, 16 uh, chunks or so. I'm not sure how big a chunk actually is, but it does loop. Uh, it's infinite for all intents and purposes. Not infinite enough, but yeah. So this is before I even started using Unity. Uh, it's done with LW, JGL, and Java. It was very, very early in my game development process. Beautiful ASCII art, ain't it? So yeah, that's this. See you next time. Rodol out.